program very shortly.
came I out of my mother's womb, naked shall I return. For the Lord has given, and the Lord has taken away. We bless the name of the Lord. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly bow in your presence today, recognizing that you are the final authority. You're the Lord of our life. You're the master of all of our situations. You're the God of all comfort. And you're comforting us even at this time so that we can bear up under the load and at the end of the day still give you the praise. I pray that you'll be a source of comfort, strength, and encouragement to the family as they go through this transition. It is my prayer that this gathering will be God glorifying and Christ honoring and that at the end of the day we will all be able to say it has been good to come together and encourage each other in the way and in the word of the Lord. I pray that all of the proceedings will go according to plan and that as we sing, as we worship, as we praise, we will do so as those who have a hope that goes beyond the grave. That our hope will firmly be established in the fact that you are in control. Work within us to will and to do of your good pleasure. We will not fail to honor you, but we will give you all the glory and all the praise that is due you. For we ask it in your name and with thanksgiving. Amen, amen. and amen. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And even though we are sad, he made the call. He warns us early in the word that all souls are mine. And I want Versi with me. But we're going to celebrate her life today. We're going to honor her and uh, let this family know. We're going to encourage the heart of this family. Aren't we going to do that? Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise in here. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. He's worthy. Oh, yes, he's worthy. It's the in spite of praise. I don't feel like it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because he's worthy of all that and more. All of the selections that you will hear today are... Uh, special songs that were special to Versi. Her family picked them out. And I'm going to ask you to be the choir when I need you, okay? If you know it, sing it. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back, way back on Cal Calvary, it was the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Oh, I know it reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes, it was the blood that gives me strength from day. Today, it will never lose, lose its power. Oh, I know it reaches to the highest mountain. Thank God it flows. Oh, it flows to the lowest valley oh yes it was the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never it will never never lose oh it will never Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
It will never lose its power. It will never, never lose its power. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. At this time, we're going to have the reading of the Old and the New Testament by Pastor Phyllis Goodman and Constant Col Constance Coleman. Please come in that order. Thank you so much. I just want to say I'm not Pastor Phyllis Goodwin. I'm her sister. She came down with a reaction to the COVID vaccine, but God is blessing her and keeping her. Yes. You know. So I'm going to read. I'm Rosemary Hampton, who is uh, the daughter ruler of the temple that Versi belonged to prior to Flushing 163 of the Elks. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I shall fear no evil. Thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I will be reading 2 Timothy verses 4, chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. For I, I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord is the word of the Lord. And it is already blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, for the reading of God's holy, holy word. At this time, we're going to have some remarks from some family, not right now from some friends, and we're going to ask Yvonne Booker Byers and Lori Kingsbury to come in that order. Now, um, are you both here? All right. I'm, I'm serving the family, okay? And I've been asked to ask you please to limit your remarks to two to three minutes. If you'll work with us, we would greatly appreciate it. On behalf of the family. So don't come for me, okay? okay. Bless you. <laughs> Good morning. Praise the Lord. I'm Yvonne Booker Byers, and I'm honored to speak about my friend, Versi Williams. I'm not just a friend, I'm family. Um, I came to know Versi 35 years ago um, when I joined the Bernard Feinstein Developmental Center, and immediately I got adopted into this family. She told me when I was coming, I don't know if I was gonna like you. Uh, you bumped a friend of mine out of my job, and I decided I wasn't gonna talk to you. 
but we hooked up, we bonded, and I became part of her family. And it was a huge family of love. And she prayed for me. Um, she prayed for my family. And because I was part of her Bernard Feinstein family, I became part of her church family. So I give honor today to my bishop and to Reverend Beverly Sharon and our former first lady. Because she was concerned not just about my work growth and my commitment, but my spiritual growth and my commitment. She was truly a Proverbs 31 woman. She had her faith in God. She loved her family. She loved her friends. She was an example to everyone. She excelled, excelled in her job. And I think when you're committed to the Lord and you love the Lord, you don't leave him at home. You don't leave him at the church. He's with you in your heart. And we saw that commitment every day. She worked for excellence on the job. She mentored each one of us as team members to do our best. And she was promoted to one of the highest levels of positions in the organization because of her excellence, her commitment, and her dedication. We knew her, we knew her family, she knew us, she knew our family. So I'm here to say her testimony is, let the life that I live speak for me. Let the work that I have done speak for me. So I'm glad to speak for her. Well done. Yes. You have left an imprint on so yes. many people. You've touched the lives of people that couldn't help themselves. Oh. She worked with developmentally disabled people and she gave them everything she could everything. and made sure we all gave everything that we could. I am honored to speak for her. And I want her Bernard Feinstein family to stand because Stacy, we are your family. We will be here for you. She was a diehard friend. We hung out, Roz, Karen, and I would get in that car, Karen driving, and we were at dinner, plays, movies, theaters. We were with her. And that commitment, 35 years, is not enough to get what she had to give. So I'm honored. My deepest condolences to the family. Love you, and we'll continue to love you, and you'll be riding with us in that car when we go to dinner. We'll see you there. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I am Lori Kingsbury, and I'm representing the Kingsbury family. My mom is here. My sister Deborah is here. We are actually connected to Versi through her daughter and her granddaughter. We are clients of Stacey Williams, and I know Stacey has a, some clients in here. And so just wave your hands to Stacey and the family. Your family is our family, and it does give me honor to stand here on the behalf of being your friend. Now, one of the things that connect to Stacy and I, and I'm gonna just lower my mask for a minute and smile. <laughs> she always would say, you look so much like my mom, right? And so we got connected that way, and we got connected in a way where when her mother was actually practicing a theological, going to theological school, we also found out we had that very, very close connection to Christ. And so I said to Stacy, I'm really praying that if the Lord does transition your mom, that we be there. And God would have it that as we went to celebrate my sister's son's 40th birthday, we wound up finding out that the funeral was today. And we were in Tampa. And we were like, that family is our family. We got to get back. And so we got on a plane last night, and we are here because you're, this, this is your village right here. And we are here. So I am going to close because when I last saw Stacy, she said a mother's love. I, I would love to hear you say a mother's love. And I'm going to do that. A mother's love. There's no love like a mother's. Her heart filled with care. 
With Christ as her example, her Savior's love she'll share. A mother's love is endless, not changing for all time. When needed by her children, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers. God bless them, everyone, for their tears and heartaches, a special work they've done. When days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on. Through many generations, God's blessings on each one. Be thankful for our mothers who live with higher love. From power God has given, a strength from up above. We are here for you, Williams family. We love you. Thank God for mercy and thank God for all of you supporting this family. Thank you. Amen. Thank you both, and thank you for working with us. De definitely appreciate it. You did good. The timer didn't go off. <laughs> Just joking. At this time, we're going to be blessed with a poem, a reflection, and a poem, Phenomenal Woman, by Doreen Stennett. Say amen as she comes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, um, Bishop Caesar, Pastor Sherrod, Mr. William, Stacy, Sharia, family, friends. Um, it gives me great honor to stand here before you this morning and read a poem. But before I do that, there's a scripture that I recall, Versi posting, and I ran it by Stacy. it's very quick, and it was Philippians 1.21, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Versi was a boss. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell it like a TIS is, and I'm going to tell the truth. Versi was a boss. And her daughter and granddaughter are bosses also. <laughs> Versi and I got along because I'm a boss, OK? And we both were born in February. We used to laugh and joke about different things. Stacy and I would compare notes about our mothers, which was really interesting. But we won't go there right now. <laughs> but uh, now to just move on so that I don't hit the buzzer. Phenomenal woman, pretty woman. Wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's Versi. I walk into a room, just as cool as you please. And to a man, the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes and the flash in my teeth, the swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. And I'm going to continue to say, that's Versi. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, <laughs> phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's Versi. Now, you understand just why my head's not bowed? I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need of my care. Because I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. 
That's Versi. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for that. And that is very true. You know, as the women were coming in today, I, I like to, to arrive when I'm serving in any capacity early. I just observe and everybody that came in here is correct. <laughs> Heels, makeup, hair, outfit. I want to, when the gentleman at the door said, which service are you here for? I want to say, if she looks right, it's Versi. <laughs> She's just, she was just that kind of woman, even coming to class at the school and wherever she went, she was together. And I, it's just a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful smile and just so gracious and just a lady, a phenomenal lady. Amen? Am I the only one? Come on, let's give her a hand. Amen. Okay, we're going to, I need the choir again. I really need the choir on this. Okay, I don't care what part you sing, alto, soprano. Whatever, I need you. But total praise. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, I will lift <clears throat> mine eyes to the hills. Knowing my help is coming from you. <clears throat> Your peace you give me in times of the storm. Sing it. Oh, you are, you are, you are, I lift my hands in total praise. you Lord I will live come on let's lift them mine eyes to the hills knowing my help my only help comes from you Lord is coming from you your peace you give me in time of the Total praise to you. I think that deserves a praise right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I think that deserves a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when I say that deserves a praise, some of you act like you woke yourselves up this morning. Some of you are acting like you started you on your way. That you have the activity of your limbs. But I'm talking about praising a God who woke me up. Who delivered my soul. Who healed my body. Who gave me another chance. And if you can't receive, listen. Somebody woke up this morning and couldn't raise their hands. I'm 
I'm speaking on his behalf. See, we assume too much. We just think we're going to wake up every day, everything going to be howdy, howdy. But the day is coming when you'll want to raise it and it won't go up. When you'll want to move and you won't be able to move. So I believe I'll testify while I have a chance because I may not have this chance anymore. Oh, yes, I'll never be able to say, God, if you just heal me, I'll praise you. No, I'm going to praise you while I can. And if you don't heal me, I won't have regret because he's been that good. He's been that kind and he's been that loving. He's that kind of friend. There's no friend like Jesus. Hallelujah. No friend like my God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. I'm not going to make nobody praise God because no rock is going to cry out for me. Hallelujah. I don't need no help. Woo. Bless God. Bless God. I can praise him all by myself. Praise the Lord. I had to do that. I just need to get that out. Because see, a year ago, doctor told me I was going to die from COVID. See, and I'm here now. So I need to praise him. Okay? I need to praise him. Because he's that good. And he's that kind. So I don't need no help. I was just going to invite you in. But I don't need help when it comes to blessing the Lord. Because I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear their oven be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us, let us, let us exalt his name together. So that's it right there. Amen. Amen. I had to get that out. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. As we move forward, we're going to have uh, some remarks and reflections by Miss Louise Williams and Dr. Crystal Baines, who is the academic dean of the Bethel Bible Institute, one of the finest learning institutions anywhere in the country, and she will speak on behalf of the school. All right, come in that order, please. Is uh, Louise Williams coming? Yes. Sir. Amen. God bless. Don't be tarry, she's coming. That's all right. <laughs> Would you like to stay down there, ma'am? Uh, are you able to come up? Whatever is comfortable for you, we'll work with you. Okay, whatever works for you. You have a pretty good sounded voice there, my dear. I got a strong voice. Yes. I'm going to take my mask down. I have Huh? Oh, we won't hear you on the stream. And this mic doesn't come out, so we'll have to have you up. Oh, wait a minute. We have one that comes down. Wonderful. Praise God. Amen. We want to hear you. <laughs> I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you today. Praise you, Lord. This is, this is a hard day for me. I met Bracey, Bercy, Bercy, 48 years ago at Bernard Feinstein. And we meshed together immediately. I am one of eight sisters. So you know I didn't need a sister. <laughs> but God said, yes, you do. Yes. And he gave me mercy. And we were truly, truly sisters. She became my eighth sister. We prayed together. We cried together. We raised our children together. My mother, who babysit for us, didn't babysit for everybody else, but she babysit and took care of Stacy <laughs> until Versi found the babysitter that was in Flushing. So Stacy went to school with my children, my nieces, and my nephews who many of them are here today. My sister, Phyllis, who lives in New Jersey and couldn't make it. Even her, her daughter's here from New Jersey, and she's on the program. Yes, this is, this is my granddaughter <laughs> and my son that's here with, with me. We praise God, we fellowship together. 
Versi belonged to the, the big church on Guy Brewer Boulevard. <laughs> and I belong to the little church on Union Hall Street. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the Free Will Missionary All Baptist right. Church. <laughs> All right. And we fellowship together on Good Fridays and any many programs. I was at Bethel Tabernacle. All right. And she was at Free Will for many of our program. I, she even had me come into class, too. Okay. <laughs> so, so I studied at Bethel. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. She was truly a, a leader. We worked together, and she loved everybody. If she couldn't help you, she didn't hurt you. She didn't hurt you. She couldn't help you, and she tried to get everybody to elevate themselves. By going to school, she encouraged you to get your education. You know, and I, all the children, and we are proud of y'all today. Stacy, I told Stacy always said, I don't think my mother's, I said, she say it all the time, Stacy, that she's proud that the woman that you have become. Sharia, you know, <laughs> she always said you was going to have some greatness in you, and you have proved that to her and showed her by doing and becoming the young lady that you have become. Yeah. Richard, I'm not going to leave you out because she always said, Take care, tell Stacy, take care of my husband. <laughs> and everybody knows that. <laughs> everybody knew, knew that. So, you know, I, 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 I'm just really, really full today. But I know where my friend, my buddy is. I know where she is. She's resting. She's resting in his arms. And she is where she wanted to be. When she said, I'm tired and I'm ready to go. And trust me, she was ready. No more pain. No more suffering. And she will be looking over us. And we will, I will, and my entire family will be here for your family. We will continue to love each other. We, t we attended family reunions together, yeah. yours and mine. <laughs> so love you, and we'll always love you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I am in the same vein with Pastor who said that it's time to praise the Lord. Yes. You know, this, this, this is a going home ceremony. Yes. This is not a funeral. Amen. We're going to see her again yes. on the other side. So we can make a little noise in here. It's okay to praise him. And when she started talking about how last year they, they were talking about that she wasn't going to make it, to God be the glory. To God be the glory for what he has done. So if you don't want to praise him, I'm here to tell you, I'm a praiser. Versi was a praiser. Okay? And if you don't want to praise him, I'm here to let you know that I believe in my spirit that there's a Holy Ghost party going on up in heaven because, because Versi made it over to the other side. God bless you. I'm the academic dean of Bethel Bible Institute best Bible Institute this side of heaven. All right. All right. If you do not have a biblical education, that's the place. Okay. okay? Bless God, I met 
uh, Sister Versi back in 2012, and she came into the Bethel Bible Institute. And I think that, I don't think there was a class that I taught that she did not take, mm -hmm. all right? Awesome woman of God. She is a woman of God who loves God. She had a love for God that was unbelievable. She came in, and there were times, you know, in, in Bethel, now, you know, when, when we were in class and, you know, the Word of God is being taught, every once in a while the Holy Ghost will drop in, and the, the class would shift, and we'd move from class to church. You see, because at Bethel you get more than just the education. You get an impartation that goes along with it. Okay, so when that shift would make, you would see Versi raise her hand. And once she raised that hand, the praise was coming. So it took a bit to bring that class back in, but nevertheless, it, 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 it was a, a place and a time where you got to see Versi in her full glory of, of praising God and worshiping God. So y'all can sit there if you want to, because I knew a praiser who is on her way to glory, you know, to, to God be the glory. I just want to tell you a little bit about, about, about Versi and my life. Versi was an awesome, dynamic woman of God. It is my esteemed pleasure to speak to you briefly this morning to share with you in the celebration of life for my dear friend and sister, Sister Versi Williams. How many of you know that Versi had a smile that could light up a room? It didn't make a difference if she was in pain. It, it, the smile was just always there. She uh, uh, was my friend. She was my big sis. I heard somebody say that she, they, she had 12 sisters or something and, and didn't need another sister, but Versi became her sister. Okay? It was hard to know Versi without becoming a part of her family. Okay, when, when I tell you she was an awesome woman of God, my fondest memories of Versi will always be her dedication to the word of God, her love for her husband and Stacy, and that radiant smile that long after she left a room, just one little thought of her would bring that smile back into view. One author wrote, a woman has two smiles that an angel might envy. The smile that accepts a lover before words are uttered and the smile that lights on a newborn babe and assures it of her mother's love. That was Versi. She loved Richard. She loved Stacy. She loved her glam daughter, okay? <laughs> she was not her granddaughter. She was her glam daughter. She loved her. Richard, Stacy, glam daughter. <laughs> No matter when Versi and I spoke, it would not be long before one of the three of you would show up in that conversation. Mm -hmm. She's gone from our presence, but not from our memories. I will cling until every thought of every thought that I've ever had with her until I meet her on the other side. I thank God for this time of being here with you. Stacy. we will talk as usual. Love you much. Thank God for this opportunity. Be blessed. Stay faithful to God. Trust him. And don't forget the best education you can get is at Bethel Bible Institute. Right. Thank you, Pastor Baines, Dr. Baines. Wonderful reflections of the time at our school. With the, I think, if I'm not mistaken, one of the last classes she took was with me. Thank you. But uh, she, we came near the end, and of course her body, she began to not be well, and she wasn't able to finish it. I sent you a text, but since you didn't get it, uh, the dean is going to be, uh, she would have graduated last year. So this year, you all have to be there because you're gonna be presented with her degree. Okay, from our dean, okay? So make sure May 15th, you're in the house and we'll present all of you with her degree that she earned. So she was a wonderful student, a wonderful woman of God. All right, at this time we do, um, we have some acknowledgements and condolences and uh, as I always say at these services, it's for the family. I'm not gonna take the time, they are, some of them are at length, they're beautiful, beautiful condolences. So I will simply acknowledge them and then in the comfort of your home, you can read the wording and see how people felt. Is that okay? okay. 
Amen. So we have one from the Women of Bethel Gospel Tabernacle, the Women's Auxiliary. Uh, Sister Deborah Harrison is the president, and Pastor Beverly Caesar is the advisor. Then we have a condolence from Bishop uh, Caesar, Bishop Roderick Caesar, and his wife, Pastor Beverly. We also have one from Pastor Roderick, our current lead pastor, and First Lady Stephanie Caesar, and the Bethel family at large. And then we also have one from Bethel Bible Institute, Dr. Baines, myself, Bishop Caesar, the faculty and staff. So these are really good reads. I want you to read them with a cup of coffee and a piece of cake. And read what people think so, how people thought so highly of this wonderful woman of God, because she was truly a great woman. Now at this time, we will read the uh, obituary. Versi was born on February 4th, 1947, in Montgomery, Alabama, to Naaman Cox and Sammy Jane Cox. At the age of nine, she moved to Hampton, Virginia. There, she matriculated through Phoenix High School and began attending the Hampton Institute, now known as Hampton University. While there, Versi became a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. She decided that there was more for her, so she relocated to New York, the city of big dreams. In 1970, mutual friends introduced her to Richard Williams. At first glance, he knew she was the one. Mm. As fate would have it, this divine connection was sealed by marriage on January 1st, 1971. From this union, Stacy B. Williams was born September 20th, 1971. Oh boy, I didn't waste no time there. Okay. And I'll leave it at that. I just, mm. Bless God. All right. Amen. <laughs> the young couple partnered together at, you know, the lighting is bad. I'm having a little challenge. All right. The young couple partnered together in Christ and joined Bethel Gospel Tabernacle under the leadership of Bishop Roderick Caesar Sr. at the time. Versi was part of the Women's Auxiliary, where she helped organize prayer breakfasts. <clears throat> luncheons, teas, and the famous annual Christmas luncheon. Versi enjoyed being a wife and mother, but also desired to fulfill her dreams and goals of completing her degree. She graduated from SUNY Empire State College in 1985 with her Bachelor of Science degree in education. She also attended, uh, attained her master's degree in special education from Hunter College in 1990 with honors. By this time, she was a doting grandmother to Sharela M. Copeland, affectionately known as Glam Baby. She's a beautiful young woman. Versi lived a very colorful life and had a tremendous impact on all those around her. She was especially known for being in, organiza for being in organizations that support and uplift black women. Such organizations include being a lifetime member of the National Council of Black Women and the Order of the Eastern Stars. After 35 years of employment with the New York State Department of Mental Retardation and Development Disabilities, Versi retired in 2003. She later became an early intervention specialist because of her core belief that children are the future. Her sense of obligation did not stop with the children, but expanded to meet the needs of the adults in their families. In a sense, she was everybody's grandma. After a few years, Versi's health began to decline, so she rededicated her commitment to doing kingdom work. That's when she enrolled in Bethel Bible Institute with her husband in 2012. Versi received her associate's degree of biblical studies, and in 2014, she obtained her ministerial studies certificate of divinity. She also had been pursuing another degree, never allowing, never allowing illness to stop her from soldiering on. She desired to do the work of the Lord. She often stated that her first leg of life was spent building her personal goals and interests, and her second leg would be spent giving all the glory and honor to the Lord. Versi was a class act. She loved to present well, had a fabulous sense of style. 
she truly was every woman. Recently, Versi said, if I have done what was required of me, I am happy to meet the Lord. She won her first battle on Monday, March 29th, her final battle on Monday, March 29th, 2021. She knew that to be absent from the body meant being present with the Lord, a life well lived. Versi leaves to cherish her memory, her husband of 50 years. My God, Richard E. Williams, one and only daughter, Stacy B. Williams, beloved glam baby, Sherela M. Copeland, sister cousin, Ms. Betty Brown, best friend, Ms. Louise Williams, and a host, a host, because if we could, this place would be packed out, packed out. We'd have to go somewhere else. A host of family, friends, and church family. She will be sorely, sorely missed. And that is the truth. So we thank God that the work she's done speak for her, that her living certainly has not been in vain. And I always thank God at a homegoing service for memory. It would be terrible if we forgot the loved one after they pass. But in the days to come, her memory will bless you. The dinners, the fellowship, the fun, the laughter. You'll refer to her for years and years to come. She will never, ever be forgotten. At this time, we're going to have a sermonic selection, Going Up Yonder, from Eva Goodman. And the next voice you hear will be that of Bishop Roderick Caesar, the overseer of the Bethel Gospel Tabernacle Fellowship International, who was Versi's pastor up until three years ago. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is not a funeral, but a home-going service. So for those who can, let's stand on our feet and give God some praise. Hallelujah. We're going to take this time to celebrate the life of On Versi. Amen. I'm going to need the choir, too, because... Uh, If you want to know where I'm going, where I'm going soon, if you want to know where I'm going, where I'm going. Time say I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. I can take the pain, the heartache it brings. The comfort in knowing I'll soon be gone. As God gives me grace, she ran her race until I see my Savior face to face. Y'all, help me sing. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. Oh, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. 
anybody ask you where she's going where she's going so she's going she's going up yonder she's going up yonder i'm going up yonder to be with my lord i'm going up yonder i'm going up yonder i'm going up yonder to be with my lord amen what a blessing and the best thing about it is we have the assurance of knowing that this is the way it is some people have a hope so salvation some people have a wish so salvation but we have a no so salvation we know that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and we are confident that when we depart from this life to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord amen well, once again, we come together to celebrate the life of one of God's children. Over the past 12, 13 months, it has been all too frequent. But thank God for memories. We can look back and see where the Lord not only brought us from, but how he connected us to each other so that we could really comprise the body of Christ, the family of God. And God is well pleased when we recognize each other and when we honor and respect each other just before I have my remarks my wife who uh, is an instructor in the Bethel Bible Institute and also oversees uh, various aspects of ministry uh, gave me uh, something that she wanted to say for herself uh, Versi had several classes with her in BBI and she was a hard-working student engaging in the studious and arduous work of disciplined uh, acquisition of knowledge and wisdom. She said, I will miss her, her warm smile, her commitment, and her love. She always offered a word of encouragement, uh, and uh, the word of encouragement was laced with affirmation. She was a faithful individual to the Women's Auxiliary, of Bethel Gospel Tabernacle. She served on one of the standing committees and her consistency and her gentleness will be missed. She was a gem and she is today absent from us but resting from her labor and in the presence of the Lord. She will be missed and thank you for that. Well, as I said, we are once again, face to face with the last enemy of life, which is death. And as we have come face to face with this reality, we have no illusions. For one day, for each and every one of us, we have to go this way. The key is living to die. So that when we come face to face with the last enemy of life, we will be prepared to usher to be ushered into the very presence of the Lord. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity once again that is given to us to lift you high, so that men and women everywhere will see you, and recognize the importance of making a godly decision for the life that you've loaned to us. I pray right now that for the family you would be the God of all comfort, that you would comfort them in all of their tribulation, enable them to stand firm and tall, even in the midst of their grief, knowing that weeping endures for a night, but it's joy that comes in the morning. Be our ever-present help in our trouble. We will not fail to praise you, 
We'll give you all the honor and glory that is due your name as we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I would simply begin by saying that life does not end at death or the grave. The eternal spirit of God within each and every one of us cannot be destroyed by the death of the body. And viewed from our vantage point, death always appears to be dreadful, defeating, and even devastating. But from God's vantage point, it is altogether different. In fact, from the word of God here, he calls the death of the righteous blessed. The word usually means happy or to be congratulated or to be fortunate. It does not express the pity that we feel and that we go through in any way whatsoever. It literally expresses that those who die in the Lord should be envied. And I believe they should be envied because she today is a part of the church triumphant. First she fought a good fight, she kept the faith, she finished the course and she's with the Lord today. We're still fighting. We're still contending for the faith. And the fact that she successfully transitioned from time into eternity, from being with us to being with the Lord, she should be our envy. Because we live for the reality that one day when we are absent from the body, we too will be present with the Lord. So we've got to live this life in such a disciplined manner that each and every day we prepare ourselves for that day when we will stand before him. Amen? First of all, death is a doorway to rest. The word of the Lord says they rest from their labor. It literally means that we are engaged in this life in service for the Lord. And when we come to the end of our service, we rest from our labor. Now, when we came to Christ, for those of you who are redeemed in the house this morning, we thought that it would be the best and easiest life we ever lived. Part of that was true. It's the best life, but it's not the easiest life. Each and every day we contend for the faith. And the reason we struggle and contend each and every day is because Satan had us, he lost us, and he wants us to be once again under his control. But the word of God says, if anyone be in Christ, they're a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. And we know that he's got grace sufficient not only to save us, but to keep us. Because the word of God says he's able to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. He's the only wise God. So we understand the importance of contending for the faith. And we also recognize that when we come to the end of life's journey, we rest from our labor. And the labor that we rest from is not working for the church. It's not working for the pastor or the officers of the church. Our labor should be Godward first. Because the Bible says we are to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And if we put God first, then everything we do comes under the umbrella of the will of God. And as we engage in the will of God, he gives grace. Amen? Amen. And he gives grace so that we can be uh, victorious each and every day. To be at rest suggests that uh, it is an end to toil and even to tribulation. The word of the Lord in Matthew 11 says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And the word of God wants us, wants us to know that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He gives grace for everything that he has equipped us to engage in in this life so that we can be more than conquerors. The greater and more complete rest will be available when we get to be with the Lord. And that should be the goal of each and every one of us. The door of death is also the door of reward. Because the word of God says their works do follow them. Everything you engage in in this life, if it's in and according to the will of God, accounts to the reward that God has for you in eternity, and these works follow us. That is why we have to see to it that everything we do has the pure motive of serving the Lord. Because if we do anything other than service to God, it is sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. At the end of the day, it does not account to anything for the reward that God has in store for us. So we've got to see to it that uh, the reward that we seek is not plaques to hang on the wall of our house. It is not the accolade and the praise that comes from men. Do you know what I've learned about human nature? It's very fickle. People can praise you today and curse you tonight. They can exalt you today and tonight they'll be the first ones with the stone ready to take it and throw it upon your head. 
So we don't live for the praise of men. We live for the glory of God and for the record that God is keeping of our service. And you see, man blesses you for what you do. We get all of our plaques for what we do. But God honors us for why we do it. The motive is more important to God than the service itself. Because he is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our hearts. And we've got to see to it that everything we do is to honor him, to glorify him, and to bless him. We wake up in the morning and sometimes we need to look in the mirror and say to ourselves, it's not about me. But it's about God being glorified. It's not about me receiving the praise and the rewards of man, but it's God getting all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And if this is what we are doing, then at the end of the day, the record that is kept will be of such that we spent our lives in service for the Lord. We are recognizing today that the record that is kept deals with the lives we live, with the words we say, and with the deeds that we do. We've got to make sure that all of it points to Jesus Christ. And if it does, then even if man does not recognize it, we are good to know that God will never forget. Because God knows what was, what is, and what shall be. The Bible says he's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the hearts of men. So that means we have to keep our hearts right and our motives pure in everything we do. So that God and the record he keeps will be of such that we will receive the reward that God has in store for us. I'm thankful that Versi was that kind of individual. She did not seek the praise and the glory of man, but she worked tirelessly to see to it that the cause of Christ would be advanced on this planet and that people who she encountered would get to know Christ through her. You see, the Bible says we are his ambassadors, isn't that right? And as Christ's ambassadors, we have to represent him, his kingdom, his cause, and his purpose. And if we do that well, then we would simply be a reflection of Christ. And the people who come to know him through us will be a part of the reward that God has in store for each and every one of us. Number three, death is a doorway to the resurrection. Uh, one of the vehicles that is going to usher us into the presence of God is death. The Bible says we won't all be sleeping, but we'll all be changed. There'll be a, a remnant who don't see death, who will see Christ face to face and go to heaven to be with him. But the countless millions who've lived for the Lord since Jesus Christ to this very day, who fall asleep in the Lord, don't have a permanent sleep. They're waiting for the Lord's alarm clock. And the Lord's alarm clock is the trumpet. So the word of God says, when the trumpet of the Lord sounds, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So death is a doorway to the resurrection. And it's a beautiful thing to recognize that we're going to meet our loved ones again face to face one day. And that we will have an eternity to celebrate around the throne of God. I was thinking when we were singing Going Up Yonder, there are many things we do here to enhance our walk and to encourage others to join us in our journey, teaching and preaching the gospel in particular. And of course, singing. Well, where would we be in the body of Christ if we didn't have song? At the low points in our lives when the Lord gives us a song to be the lifter of our head and to be the encourager that we need at that time in life. But when we get to heaven, there won't be any more preaching. Because the purpose of preaching is for the conversion and the matur uh, maturing of souls. There won't be any more teaching. But the one thing we will have throughout the countless ages of eternity is the song. We'll be singing and praising the Lord. So when we consider the resurrection, it's going to be a joyous occasion when we sing together around the throne of God and we celebrate the fact that God kept us and preserved us and gave us an opportunity and the ability to successfully live in this life and to be transitioned from earth to glory. Our sister Versi made the transition well. And when we make the transition well, what it really speaks of is the fact that when things aren't going our way, we still give God the praise. There are some people, there are some people who can't do that. When things don't go their way, they're filled with lamentations and complaints. But I did not hear anyone speak of her negative spirit or her negative attitude. She had the attitude of, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And for this reason, we honor her and we celebrate her today because death is the step that all of us must take. 
The Word of God lets us know that all of us are going to go that way, and we have to be prepared for it. And it's a step of unknown timing. We don't know when it's going to happen. If you were told the exact day, time, hour, minute, second that you would depart this life, how different would the life of many be? They would live according to their dictates until the last 24 hours. And then they'd get it together and prepare themselves to meet the Lord forever and forever. But because we don't know, each and every day we have to make it count. And the way we make it count is by living for Him and seeking first His kingdom and His righteousness. Amen? And because it's a, uh, a step of unknown taking and timing, we have to make sure that every day is a day that we bless, that we honor, that we praise and glorify and magnify the name of Jesus. And if so, then regardless to when it happens, we know where we are going. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And death, of course, is the step that separates because it comes and takes away our loved ones. And it uh, leaves us, as it were, destitute of their love and uh, their fellowship. But it does not take away our memory. The memory of how we enjoyed fellowship when we had the opportunity. That is why we need to learn to treat each other right because you never know when you'll lose the opportunity to do it again. Every time you engage with people, you need to do it as unto the Lord so that you will have no memories that are negative because you could have, should have, would have done something better. Do it while you can. Love people while you have the opportunity and let the love of God prevail in your life each and every day. Finally, I say that death is a step that should only be taken with Christ. Don't take this step, this leap, without Christ in your life. Because at the end of life's journey, no matter what you did, no matter who you were good to, if you have not first sought God's kingdom and his righteousness, none of it will be of any value whatsoever. The word of the Lord says there will be those in the last days who will say, Lord, didn't we do this, that, or the other in your name? And the word of God tells us the Lord will say to them, don't even stand in my presence. Depart from me. You're a worker of iniquity. I don't even know you. I don't want to have that as my legacy. I want to be able to hear the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the rest. And the only way he'll say it is if you've done well. So we can't fudge it. We've got to live it. We've got to strive to make that our objective in life each and every day. And we've got to seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And I'm thankful that I can say, to the best of my knowledge of our sister Versi, she was that kind of individual. And the evidence of it sits among us today. There are people who came to know Christ and to develop a deeper relationship with him because she impacted their lives. So we celebrate her life today and we thank God that she passed our way, crossed our pathway, and gave us an opportunity to know her Christ in a deeper and more substantial way than we would have known him otherwise. And we are richer and better for the experience of having engaged her in this life. Amen? Amen. Would you bow your heads for just a moment? And as you bow your head, I'd like to give someone who might be in uh, divine presence at this time an opportunity, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, to come to know him. Would you be honest enough with yourself to acknowledge the fact that you're lost, that you're not serving the Lord as you should? You know better, but you have not done better. Would you believe today that Jesus Christ is the only way to God? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father unless he comes through me. Would you be willing to confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ can save you and redeem you from sin? If so, then simply slip your hand up and put it right down. I'll include you in my closing prayer. I'm not asking anybody to join a church or become a part of a fellowship. I'm asking you to become a part of a family, the family of God through spiritual adoption by accepting and receiving Jesus Christ as Lord. Would you raise your hand if that's you today? put it right down. I just want to pray for you. That's all. Nothing more. Anywhere in the house. I see that hand in the back. Anybody else? Anyone else? All right. I'm not going to belabor the issue. Time is precious. You've had the opportunity to respond. And I thank God for those of you who have. Let's pray. Once again, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we've had to come together and celebrate the life of a good, godly woman who impacted us and touched us in many ways. 
I pray for those who have raised their hand to receive new life, salvation, deliverance by faith in the word and promise you made to us. Forgive them of their sins. Cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Give them a hunger and a thirst for the things of God and a dissatisfaction for life as it is lived without you. And I pray that they will so cultivate this relationship that it will last them a lifetime. I pray for the family and those who've gathered with the family that you would be the God of all comfort to them and strengthen them as they continue to go through the process of grieving and into the process of celebrating your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Do it for them as you've done it for us, Lord, and we won't fail to praise you. For we ask it in your name and with thanksgiving. Amen. For those of you who raised your hand, three things you need to do to make today's decision last. Number one, talk to God each day in prayer. And recognize that prayer is not monologue. It's not you telling God this, that, or the other. But it's also being still before him and letting him speak to your heart. Number two, read the word of God each and every day. Sometimes people say, I don't read the Bible because I don't understand it. But you've just been introduced to the author. Nobody can explain it better than him. So ask him to open up your heart and your mind and your understanding and your wisdom so that you will read, comprehend what you read, and apply it to your life. Third and finally, find a church where the word of God is preached, where there's a concern for your soul, not for your talent or for your wallet, but for your soul. And if you'll find that church and connect with that ministry, then what is taking place today will become a permanent fixture in your life. Do it, and God will bless you. To the family, we stand with you in solidarity. There'll be some dark nights ahead, but you don't have to stand alone. We're as near as your telephone, and whatever we can do to assist you in this process, we stand waiting and available. God bless you is my prayer, and God be with you. The funeral director at this time. Thank you for coming today to celebrate the life of First Seacox. At this time, we are coming to the conclusion of this service here. We will be making the procession to Pine Lawns Memorial Park. Those who are going to be going to the interment, please get a sticker at the, at the desk, the front desk, and place them in the back of your cars. Thank you.